Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Reverend Felicia. And I'm Minister Greg. And we are here to welcome you to Community of Hope, where everybody has a chance. We don't care who you are, what you did, if you did it last night or woke up doing uh -oh. it this morning. Uh -oh. But when you get here, mm -hmm. here, wherever your hair is, you in the right place uh -huh. at the right time to, do what? to become all that God has called you to okay. be. Okay, what happens when they do that? God has a blessing with your name. Where? Slam on it. Ah, C-O-H. I miss y'all. We miss being <laughs> in the spirit, but we're here virtually with you guys, mm -hmm. and we want you all to enjoy this web worship experience, the Sunday morning hope yeah. experience. You can catch us on any streaming platform under the hash of Community of Hope. Um, that'd be Instagram, Facebook, Roku TV, Apple TV, you name it, we're there because we are global. We are global, and guess what, y'all? We still have opportunities for you to serve. So as the service is going on, be sure you look out for the announcements. The greeters are looking for some new greeters. Yes, that can be possible mm -hmm. even while we're still virtual. The women's ministry has some things popping off. So make sure you're looking out for those announcements. The men's ministry has oh, some Italian. things going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so Get make sure you're looking Get connected to the marriage that. ministry, mm -hmm. all types of ministries. Hope Inc., you know, with the kids, right? Mm -hmm. Every, everybody's still looking to be engaged and we still have many of opportunities for folks to serve. And most of all, in your serving, don't be, don't forget that giving is part of serving. Yeah. So during this time, you also have several ways to give. That'd be Cash App, uh, Secure Give. Um, you can mail your cert. You can mail your uh, payments in. But again, any way that you want to give, any way that you feel led to give, will be a blessing to this community. Yeah, and so make sure that also, even, you know, whenever you're watching us, you have the opportunity to go to the Community of Hope channel on uh, Fire TV, Roco TV, and there you can watch any of our services on demand. You can also go to different ministries and see what they have set up for you based mm -hmm. on what your specific needs are. We still are the church, and we are so glad that you have joined us on today. That's it? You good, girls? Stay I'm getting ready to go get some breakfast so I can hear <laughs> Pastor preach. Yeah, we eat while we watch service and interact. <laughs> but that's okay. You can do the same thing, too, and make sure you invite some people to do it with you. So let's go and enjoy this dynamic service. It's Sunday morning! When you understand the greatness that God has called you to be, then you want folks around you to be with you for the journey. Have I got anybody in here that you know that God has called you to be great? That God has called you to be special? That God has called you to do something wonderful? If you believe that in the house today, then somebody make a joyful noise! Good morning, <laughs> COH. We are your Hope Pack Young Adult Ministry of Community of Hope, and we are here for your Sunday takeover. We're so excited for what God is about to do in this service. Make sure y'all share this with three family members, three friends, and three neighbors. <laughs> I'm Kayla. And I'm Minister Kyla. <laughs> and we want to shout out the best pastor in the world, our senior pastor, Reverend Tony Lee. Yeah. The best, <laughs> the best assistant pastor, <laughs> Reverend Bill Lee. And the best executive minister in the nation, what Reverend Dr. Nancy, Nancy Lee, Lee, for giving us this platform and trusting us with this. We want to honor the shepherds of our house. Yes. And we also want to shout out our ministers of the Young Adult Ministry, Reverend Keisha and Minister Raynell, they are truly, truly, truly the best. We love y'all. All right, girl. Let's play. Okay. Whew. Father God, we come to you today, God, just to say thank you. Thank you for bringing us to this space to commune together, God, and to come and hear your word today, God. We ask you that you bless us today, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, God. We ask you that you allow us to see to the end of this day, God, to the end of this service, God. We ask that, that um, the lives of our uh, family, uh, church family, is touched today, God. We ask you that you allow us to see each other again next Sunday. 
We actually thank you for all these things. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get it, y'all. Yeah. of the week. 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 All right, so you know here at COH, we are study strong. All right, so this week's scripture we got for y'all is Hebrews 4, 6. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So we need y'all to remember that and be ready for next week because so, you know, gotta be study strong at all times. 
All right, so last week's scripture of the week was 2 Timothy 1, 7. But God did not give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and self-discipline. So let's kick it to the folks who will study strong. Hey. Good morning. This is your scripture of the week, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Good morning, family. This is Minister Kyla with your scripture of the week. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power and self-discipline. Study strong, y'all. Good morning, COH, and I'm here with your scripture of the week. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. For God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Study strong. Y'all know since y'all so study strong, we gotta hit y'all with a little bit of a dance. Hey. What's up, y'all? Y'all already know what's the 411. What's the 411? You got it going on. You got it going on. That's right, right here at the good old community of hope. Hey, listen, quick things we need y'all to know. Number one, August 14th, you need to get there. We are excited. We will be right there at the Hope Center and we'll be doing uh, COVID testing, we will be doing HIV testing. And we'll be giving out free book bags as well to our young people and uh, free blue glasses to the young people as well. So listen, we got HIV testing, we got COVID-19 testing, and then for our young folks, we want to bless them with some book bags and make sure that they got the good uh, blue light uh, computer uh, glasses for computers as well. And so that's right there, the whole center, August the 14th. Let me give you that date. It is August 14th and it starts from 11 o'clock to 2 p.m. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I want to shout out our young adult ministry and our outreach ministry doing big things right there at the Hope Center. Y'all will see the address somewhere around here. Y'all will see it. They're going to put it down for you to make sure that you get there. But also don't forget the next 411. What is it, Reverend Bill? It is the Hope Center and we are presenting a free digital life skills course. It will start on this Tuesday at 10 a.m. and it will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays for two weeks. It'll help you to get your Microsoft skills where they need to be, Excel, Word, spreadsheets, the whole nine. Get your resume straight because some of y'all, listen, y'all know this is the upgrade decade and God's going to upgrade you, but you got to be prepared and ready. And some of y'all need to get your resume a little bit tighter. So make sure y'all get locked in on that as well. So look, I'm excited. That's the 411. We got all those things going on. Also, young folks, all our young folks ages 18, let's say 5 to 18. We'll go there. But look, we got these young, uh, these youth uh, Sundays, and we want to make sure that you are involved. If you want to do Scripture of the Week, if you want to do the introduction, you might even have a word. I don't know what it is you want to do, but whatever you want to do, we're trying to get y'all locked and loaded because we're going to make sure that our young people's youth Sundays look like how you want them to look and they are involved in it as well. So look, make sure uh, you get on uh, www.hiphopenation.com. You can go there. You can also go info at hiphopenation.com and send an email. But all our young folks that want to get involved in the youth Sunday services that we're doing uh, every fourth Sunday, Send us your info because we want to see you participating in your Sunday. You don't want no youth Sunday that got me and pastor and all us old heads on it because that ain't no youth Sunday. That's an old Sunday with us pretending to be young. We ain't young. We need you. All right. All right. Cool things. Hey, look. Also, we're excited because guess what, y'all? It is time to give. It is time to give. So y'all already know what you need to do. You can give in so many different ways. Y'all already know you can cash out, give a fire, whatever it is, pray proud or hold now. We got it all for you, but it is your opportunity to give and being faithful over what God has given you. All right. 
all my faithful givers, let's do this. Also, we want to thank God we're not just givers, but we're tithers. We believe in the tithe, getting 10% of whatever it is that God has given you. We call that the first fruit. We want to make sure we break off God with the first fruit. We ain't waiting to get on leftovers now. Nah, we want, as soon as they get on us, we giving it to God. Uh, and so get your tithe ready, get your offering ready, and, and get excited. You can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. That's what my grandmother used to say. And if God has blessed you to give, that means God has also blessed you to do what? Receive. That's right. God has definitely blessed you to receive. So this is our opportunity to give and let's do it faithfully and let's do it because we know God is good and we want to show God how much we trust him, not just with the regular stuff, but with our money as well. All right, COH, let's do this. All right, so look, let's go ahead and pray for this offering. God, in Jesus name, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to give. We are grateful, God, that everything we have comes from you. And so, God, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would bless every single giver that is giving on today, God, giving faithfully, God, giving God out of obedience, God, giving God because they trust you. And so, God, I ask God that you would bless the tithes, God, you would bless every offer that's being given on today. And we thank you, God, how you shall use it, God, to your honor and to your glory, God. So, God, in Jesus' name, we are grateful for this moment to give. Bless it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, young folks, y'all take this thing over. Y'all are doing an amazing job, too. Holding it down, holding it down. Good morning, COH. I am Sister Shayla representing the Hope Pack here with your Hope Vitamin. But actually, I'm going to give you an affirmation for this week. I love affirmations. I'm the queen of affirmations, so I'm going to give you all one of my affirmations. I'm proud of myself for all my big and little victories. And I found a great scripture to go along with this affirmation. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So with that being said, we can always celebrate our victories. Um, I have three points that I would like to give you to go along with this affirmation. First one, celebrate your accomplishments no matter how big or small. So if you're on your own weight loss journey and you lose that one pound this week, then that's a great thing because it will lead to you losing more pounds and it will lead to even a bigger goal. Always small victories lead to bigger victories, okay? So never discount you celebrating or achieving something small because it always leads to something major. And lastly, something that I always do is to write out your victories. That way you can reflect on where you started. So writing out your victories allow you to see where you started and to see where you are going. So remember, I'm proud of myself for all my big and little victories and have a great week.
doing? This is Pastor Ware once again with your mental health moment. And your mental health moment for this week is keep it simple. Keep it simple. A couple of weeks ago, we had talked about being able to clear some things out, being able to, in some cases, going through those old clothes, going through those old papers, going through the old things that sometimes can clutter our life. Matter of fact, as we've gone through the pandemic, in some cases, we've actually got more stuff. We cluttered things more. Uh, all of those Amazon packages now sitting around, those things that you thought you were going to use. It may be that juicer. It may be uh, that air fryer, whatever it is, uh, the baking set, all of those things that you thought you were going to use, you find yourself not only not using them, but they're taking up space. So one of the things I want you to do is even as we start to look forward to one of our last kind of big holidays before the school system starts, and in many cases uh, before persons will be going back uh, to work in a more uh, significant way from the standpoint of being in person, all of those things, we really want to be able to take this time to kind of get rid of some of the clutter. And so therefore, keep it simple. If you were to look at your workspace, where it is even if you're working from home, but even things like your bedroom, your living room, dining room, kitchen, all of those things, and be able to say, okay, how much clear space do I see? Is there enough room for me to do what I need to do? And so even myself, I think I have a juicer that I haven't used to make juice in over a year. And so even though it's sitting in a prominent place is taking up countertop space, it's actually not doing anything for me. And so therefore, for me, that would be something I would have to move. And so really just looking at just the areas in your house, even for young adults, even for youth, even for kids, the toys that you might not any be using anymore, go ahead and kind of move those to the side. Okay, I know somebody talking about their PS5, somebody talking about their Xbox, the games that you haven't played in two, three years, go ahead and move them out the way. What we want to be able to do is keep things simple. Sometimes even our mood can be determined by our environment. So if you come into an environment that is consistently cluttered, if you come into an environment that is consistently, uh, for lack of a better word, crowded, then that can actually impact your mood. It can impact just your ability to be able to think as clearly as you would like. So clear your space, and in some cases, you will be able to clear your mind. So just take these time over these next couple of weeks to kind of go through and see where can I make things cleaner? Where can I make things, for lack of a better word, I can move some stuff out the way so that I only have in front of me what I need, that I keep it simple. And if you're able to keep it simple, if you're able to keep it clear, then it's going to have a positive impact on your mental health. This has been your Mental Health Moment. I'll see you next week. Hi, I hope you are enjoying this Hope Pack Sunday Takeover. The Hope Pack wants to invite anyone ages 18 to 35 to join our ministry. We have refill every first Monday and Bible study every second and fourth Monday. For more information and ways to get involved, you can email us at H-O-P-E-P-A-C, another C, O-H, at gmail.com. Okay, now if you have been asking yourself, why should I join the Hope Pack? Here are a few reasons why. Hi, my name is Shayla, and I just would like to express a few words about how the Hope Pack Young Adult Ministry at uh, COH has definitely been a blessing to me during this coronavirus pandemic. It allows me to stay connected not only to the church, but to my church family. It has definitely um, helped me strengthen not only my walk with Christ, but my prayer life, my spiritual life. And also it gives me a chance to talk to people that I normally would sit next to on a Sunday or physically be around um, when we have different events. So I am thankful for my Hope Pack family and I am thankful for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I would advise anybody ages 18 to 35 to definitely jump on board and definitely come and be a part of the Hope Pack family. Hey family, it's Sister Jasmine. I just wanted to come and talk to you all about what the young adult ministry means to me and what it has meant to me during this pandemic. Um, 
back in January of last year, I lost my mother due to cancer and it has been the most challenging season of my life. Um, then the pandemic happened and not being able to go into the house of the Lord and worship and fellowship the way that I would like to do has made it made a challenging season even more challenging. We started doing our refills and um, our Bible studies virtually and what the young adult ministry has done for me has given me something to look forward to. If you are going through a, a dark season and you're you just don't know what to do having something to look forward to has made made the difference made all the difference in the world to me um being able to fellowship with my brothers and sisters and praying with everybody i know that we're going to once we get to the once we have the refill or once we have a bible study i know that i'm going to be able to laugh might cry i know that if I can't even pray for myself, somebody's going to pray for me. Um, just a sense of family and a sense of community. Um, knowing that I'm not by myself in it and knowing that I'm not the only one that has gone through it has given me peace. And if I could say what the young adult ministry has done for me personally, it has saved my life. And I'm just grateful to Reverend Keisha and Minister Raynell. I'm thankful for um, Reverend Tony for allowing us to have this ministry um, and the young adults we just rock and I'm just grateful so I just hope everybody has a blessed week and see you soon community of hope hey hey can I tell y'all how the hope pack C-O-H young adult ministry been a blessing to me I mean during this pandemic they helped me continue to grow in my faith and they've been here to help keep me sane with fellowship, you know, keep connected to people that I care about and just, just want to be around. You know, my wife got pregnant during the pandemic. You know, they were here with prayers, help uplifting. You know, Hope Pack has been everything I've needed during this pandemic. You know, thank you.
the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. First, I want to give honor to God for this awesome opportunity to share in his word on this Sunday morning. I give honor as well to our great executive team, our pastor, Reverend Tony Lee, our assistant pastor, Reverend Bill Lee, and our wonderful executive minister, Reverend Dr. Nancy Lee, for trusting the God in me and allowing me to share in his word and to be a part of this young adult ministry here at Community of Hope. Since Hope Pack, uh, which is our young adult ministry here at Community of Hope, has been studying the book of Exodus in our Bible study time, I did not find it strange that Exodus is where the Lord uh, would lead me on today for our time together. So if you would, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 20. Uh, and that's the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 20. And it reads, so it that it being a pillar of cloud uh, came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. Thus, it was a cloud and darkness to the one and it gave light by night to the other so that the one did not come near to the other all that night. If I could leave you with the title that will help you recall this preach word on this day, it would simply be, you're never too old for a nightlight. You're never too old for a nightlight. Let us pray. Father God, it's in your blessed name, God, that we come before you just to say thank you, God. God, we thank you for this opportunity for a Hope Pack takeover, God. We thank you for these young adults. We thank you, oh God, for this church called Community of Help, God. We thank you for every listener, oh God, every viewer, oh God. We thank you, God, knowing that you will bless their lives exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask or think. God, we invite you into this space, oh God, knowing that we can truly do nothing without you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. As a child, I can remember uh, living in North Carolina and being told that it was time for me to go to bed so that I was well rested for school in the morning. I can remember going down a partially lit hallway towards the room that I slept in. And I can remember even crawling in the bed and being tucked in by my mother who would kiss me and say goodnight. The part that troubled me, however, was that when my mom would cut the light off in the room. See, my hometown is in the woods or the sticks, as we call it. Uh, and there are no street lights around our house at all. And there is just complete darkness all around. And North Carolina in the sticks darkness is something really that you really have to experience on your own. It's like no other darkness I have experienced. It is so dark that if you held your own hand up close to your face, although you knew it was there, you could not see it. All I saw was darkness and in fear, I would shout out to my mom knowing that she had forgotten something. And I would say, Mama, turn the nightlight on. As I was uh, reading in the book of Exodus, I was reminded uh, of how the Israelites were being faced with a dark situation as they were leaving Egypt. In Exodus 20, they made their way out of bondage and was headed to a place of promise when all of a sudden they realized that Pharaoh's army was in hot pursuit and they could see uh, darkness, nothing but darkness in that moment and how they were caught in between a rock 
and a hard place because before them was the Red Sea, but behind them was an army of death. How the Israelites responded was just like I did as a child. The word of God says in verse 10 that the sons of Israel cried out in fear to the one who had the ability to illuminate their situation. And it was in that moment that I realized that you're never too old for a nightlight. Because scripture doesn't say that just the children cried out, but it says Israel cried out. That means that the adults, young and old as well, called on the name of the Lord to help them in their dark situation. The scripture says that God turned on a nightlight by the means of a pillar of a cloud and provided them with three essential things that I believe are also beneficial to us as believers. The first essential thing that the nightlight provides is vision and direction. See, I was uh, it was uh, because of the nightlight of God that I believe that the people were able to really see clearly the power and the glory of God displayed in verse 21. See, just like in the sticks of North Carolina, there were no street lights to aid the Israelites in their ability to see. But the light of God allowed them to partake in the visionary witness of Moses as he stretched his hands over the Red Sea. I believe that God's night light was nothing like the little night light in my room because it was large enough to illuminate the way for 600,000 people to have vision, to see clearly just where and in what direction that God was clearly leading them. I just believe that as they were in fear for their lives, and not having the vision to initially see their way of escape and seemingly uh, only having the ability to see that they were, they were in between a rock and a hard place that our God, as wonderful as he is, stepped in right on time and illuminated their situation, which caused them while in the midst of darkness to uh, of their lives to fully see with clarity the parting of the Red Sea. Yeah, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning and who's listening this morning and what young adult may be facing a dark situation in their life. But God uh, will shine his light in your dark situation so that you will see his glorious miracle transpire in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning uh, who's walking in fear and darkness and need God to be uh, a, a, a one to come in and part open the dark place of your life and allow you to walk in faith this morning and not fear, but towards the vision and direction of his glory, even though there is a sea of darkness all around you. Whoever it is on this morning, I need you to know that the light of God is what is needed to provide you with not only vision uh, that you need for clarity, but the direction that you've been longing for, uh, uh, for this adult period of your life. The second thing that uh, the night light provides provides is support and comfort. And I, as I go back to this little girl, Keisha, I'm reminded that whenever I called my mother from the darkness of my bedroom, uh, she would double back and turn the night light on. And in that moment, something would happen inside me uh, that I felt support. I felt comfort that I need that would make me uh, make it through the rest of the night. This is the same concept that I believe happened for the Israelites in their time of darkness and difficulty. Difficulty. God stepped in and provided them with light, but he also provided them support and he provided them with the comfort that they needed to hold on in the midst of darkness. See, it's something about when God shines his light on your situation and you see him working on your behalf. Oh, what a great comfort. Oh, what great support it is to feel and know that God has the ability to handle all your troubles and all your dark situations. So when I can't see my way in the dark place. He provides the comfort and support for me through the light of his word, through the light of his word and says to me that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And because of the light of his word and it becomes a night light for me, I can see that um, even in my despairing place of a dark situation that God is right there and he becomes the comfort and the support that I need. The third thing that the night light provides is rest. See, uh, 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 the first uh, 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 
at first, uh, when we see darkness, it's it's troubling to us and it can cause discomfort. I, I'm honest, it can cause discomfort and it can cause worry. And it has the ability to keep you up all night long. Uh, being in the fear of darkness can make you even become paranoid and jumpy and make us feel that we can't have peace or rest because we're so heavily troubled by our dark place. However, what I see here in this book of Exodus is that God indeed in the darkness provides them with rest. See, rest can be defined as a state of motionless and inactivity or peace of mind and spirit. And from this word of God in Exodus 14, we see that the Israelites were making their way of escape from er from Pharaoh's army and God stepped in and provided the Israelites with rest. How did he provide them with rest? You ask, well, he provided some inactivity and motion and motionless for Pharaoh's army who could not move. In fact, scripture says that Pharaoh's army could not even come near the people of God as the pillar of cloud stood between Pharaoh's army and God's people. See, I don't know how you feel about it, but whenever God steps into my dark place and provides uh, uh, provides the enemy the inability to have access to me. That is rest. And that is peace that I need in the dark place to help me to continue on in the presence of God. Not only does he provide peace to the Israelites in the form of motionless, but he also provides them peace of mind and spirit to them as well as uh, they watched and they saw the hand of God moving on their behalf and opening the way for them to move towards safety and promise. Come on, somebody. And all that we go through, we all have to endure. We have to got to know that God has the ability to provide us with light when we need him in our dark place. And the light should provide us with peace needed to help us make it in our darkness and in our chaos. So my task and my assignment this morning was just to tell somebody, I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're a young adult or an older adult, you're never too old for a nightlight. And sometimes that might might mean that we have to cry out in the midst of darkness. That means sometimes we might have to cry out in the midst of fear so that the light of God can shine in through our situation. And if we're honest and we're really honest as we get older and we begin to live life a little bit more and we understand that God is really the light that we need in our lives in the midst of all that we're going through, we understand that when God comes in and begins to shine on our situation, there is where we find peace. There is where we find rest. There is where we find comfort. There is where we find joy. There is where we find the resources of everything that we need in life. And so I just came by this morning to tell somebody that I don't care how old you are. You're not too old for a nightlight. I don't know who it is today, but you've gotten older and you've moved into those adult years. And you have discovered that you need something more for your life. And you've seen darkness and chaos. And you've come to a place where you just need a little light to shine in the midst of your life and your situation. Well, today is a good day. It's a good day to get some vision. It's a good day to get some direction. It's a good day to get some comfort. It's a good day to just get and hold on to some peace. But it all starts with the light of God in your life. So today, if you desire the light of God to illuminate your situation, all you have to do is pray this prayer with me today and receive the Lord Jesus. The prayer says, Father God, I thank you for your prayer of faith, which I in that prayer, I recognize that I am a sinner before you and I receive you today as the forgiver of my sins and the Lord of my life so that the light of God will be displayed in this moment right now and forevermore in my life. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. It's my prayer that not only uh, was God's word a blessing to you, but that this young adult takeover on this Sunday was a blessing in your life today. And until we have an opportunity to come together again and lift up the name of Jesus, I hope that your lives are really blessed and that you are um met with abundance, joy, favor, and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Man, that right there, Reverend Keisha, that was a amazing word. And I don't know about you, I needed to hear that. It is never, you are never too old for a nightlight. That thing actually made me think about the nightlight I used to have in my house. But hey, Brother Keisha, thank you so much for that word, not just for young adults, but for all of us. And listen, COH, uh, this concludes the good old Sunday morning hope worship experience. Uh, it was amazing. Young adults, y'all did an amazing job. I salute you and thou and salute. I did it backwards that you knew what I meant, but y'all did an amazing job. Thank y'all so much. And, and listen, I just want to uh, have the closing word of prayer. God, in Jesus name, we thank you, God, for all that is taking place on the day. Thank you, God, for that word to remind us, God, that it is never, we are never too old for a night like God. Thank you, God, that you are our light and our salvation, whom shall we fear? Whom shall we be afraid? And so God bless us all as we go into this week. God encourage us, God lift us up and help us God to share to a dying world that Jesus still lives because he lives in us. So God, we thank you in Jesus name we pray, amen. Hey, y'all listen, got a lot going on. Don't forget the 411. We wanna thank God for everything that's happened on the day. And I will see y'all on next Sunday. Holla, holla, holla at your boy. Peace.